So we will read, uh, just continue with book, The Saints of Raj. Uh, and for those of you who have book, it's page uh, 127, chapter 14. Pisi ma Goswamini and Sri Gopeshwara Goswami. There is a small temple of Goranitai in Vrindavan near Bankandi. Mm. The deities in the temple were originally worshipped by Murari Gupta, a close associate of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So Murari Gupta's name is engraved there on the pedestal. There is an interesting story relating to the discovery of the deities and their arrival in Vrindavan. After Murari Gupta, the deities were worshipped by his brother and his descendants for several generations in Sarkar Rajpur village in district Siuri of West Bengal. And at one time, no one in the line of descendants of Murari Gupta remained to serve the deities. An epidemic and the constant surge of malaria compelled the people of the village to go and settle somewhere else. The desolate village was in course of time turned into jungle. Mm. The temple of Goranitai fell down and the deities were covered by the jungle. The cowherds of the adjoining villages begin to use this jungle as a pasture for cows. A cowherd who used to go to the jungle for tending cows noticed that every day one of his cows separated from the flock, from the herd, and went and stood at the same site of the temple, spraying milk from its teeth, others. Yeah. So he told this to the villagers, and they were mystified. Yeah. 
to solve the mystery, they dug the spot. They dig out, they dug out the deities. And then after they reconstructed the temple in Suri and made proper arrangement for the service of the deities. After some time, Balaram Das Babaji, a Siddha saint of Orissa, began to serve the deities according to the message he had received from them in a dream. Once Chandra Shashi Goswami a young lady belonging to the famous Mukho Padhyaya family that were landlords of Delagram in the district of Nadia came to Siuri and stayed in a house near the temple of Gauranitai. She felt very much attracted by Gauranitai and developed motherly affection for them. She started offering them kir made from 40 kilograms of milk every day. Well, once Goranitai came to her in a dream, and they said, Mother, we are very hungry and we want to eat kheer prepared by you. When she told Balaram Das Babaji about this, he said, the scriptures forbid the cooking of food for the deities by a person who is not properly initiated. Therefore, Chandra Shashi Goswamini got initiated by Balaram Das Baba and then she was offering the deity's kir prepared by her own hands. Then, the same night, she had another dream in which she saw both Goranitai holding her just a moment loose end of the sari, uh -huh. holding the loose end of her sari that hangs from, from her shoulders. This is this part of sari. They were pulling on this part of sari. And they were saying to her, Mom, Please, don't go away from here. If you go away, who will cook here for us? 
Besides, mom, you are our mother. And we are your children. How can the children live without mom? Chandra Shashi, like a good but helpless mother, lovingly pleaded her inability to stay on in Suri indefinitely. And, lest, and ask them, please, don't pull on my sari any longer. But they didn't want to let, let off her sari. They pulled. And then there was a war. In the tug of war, uh, they uh, torn a part of her sari, and that part remained in the hand of Gora. When Chandra Shashi woke up from dream, she saw that part of sari <laughs> actually torn from her sari. And she was amazed. And immediately she went to Balaram Baba and told him about it. So the day was just beginning. It was a dawn. And the door of the temple was not yet opened. So Balaram Baba went there, opened the door, and both he and Chandra Shashi were surprised to see the torn off piece of sari in the hand of Gora still. So from time to time, because uh, Ananda Prema is close to me, so from time to time, I will just wait for her. <laughs> so just take your time. Don't worry. Take your time. Yeah. Yeah. I'm on track right now. Yeah, yeah, I hear. I hear. Hmm. So, so I will from time to time, I will just wait for her. Chandra Shashi was overwhelmed by a strong current flow of devotion that in that moment swept away her attachment to her home and all its opulence and glory. She, was, she became determined never to go back. And she deci decided to stay with Goranitai and take of them, take care of them as a mother takes care of children. Mm. So she decided to stay and live there. Jai Nita Gaur. <laughs> Once, while she was cooking, her Gaur Nitai, her per period started. And the woman that's in period is not allowed to cook for the deities. So she came out of the kitchen 
and lie down on the veranda in front of Goran Itai. Looking at, at them with deep helplessness, and feeling deep sorrow that they would not be able to eat food cooked by her that day. As she was lamenting, she saw as if in dream that both Gora and Nitai came to her and said, Mom, why are you lamenting? You are our mother. We are your children. Do what usually mother does in this condition for her children. And you will not commit any offense. It's not wrong. Go, take your bath, cook, and give us to eat. We are very hungry. <laughs> and in this way, you will be free from your sorrow and lamentation. Chandra Shashi, never again after that had her period. <coughs> Chandra Shashi at this time was only 20 years old. And her staying alone in the temple with Babaji aroused suspicion in the minds of a people. <coughs> they began to talk slanderously of her and the Babaji. And this pained her very much. Mm. One night, before going to sleep, she cried before Goranitai and complained to them and asked from them something. The same night, she had a dream in which Goran Itai lovingly threw their arms around her neck and said, Mom, let's go to Vrindavan. <laughs> so Chandra Shashi and Balaram Baba took Goranitai to Vrindavan. They made the journey by boat. So Ganga, Yamuna, Vrindavan. <laughs> when the boat reached Vrindavan, a devoted lady of Nadia district, uh, her name was Bhakta. She was taking bath in, in Yamuna and she was very happy to see Gauranita. So she took them along with Chandra Shashi and Balarambhava to her home in Bankandi. Mm -hmm. 
Chandra Shashi, lived there happily, served Goranitai with all her heart and soul. And Bhakta assisted her in service. The residents of Bankandi called Bhakta Tishima, father's sister. Bhakta called Chandra Shashi Didi, sister. Therefore, Chandra Shashi also began to be called PC Ma. Mm -hmm. Goranitai were very restless and uh, naughty. <laughs> They were full of pranks. <coughs> they always asked for, for something or the other to satisfy their fancy. And uh, like bothered PC with their never ending demands. When Pisima failed to fulfill their demand, they did not hesitate to go and beg for things from somewhere else, wherever they like. <laughs> Is it not strange that Gora and Nitai, the lords of the universe, whose partial manifestations are Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva, and who create, govern, and destroy the universe? at will, whenever they like, that they should go about begging? Is it? But the world of love, in which they love to live and roam around, is different from the rest of the universe. Here, in Vrindavan, they are not the great lords who control and govern and give reward or punishment. Here, they are themselves governed by their devotees love them with all their heart and who want nothing from them but give them all they have here they are not givers they are beggars for although there is no limit to their possessions and power to create new things. There is one thing which they, they neither have nor they can create. And that is the love offering of their devotees which they cherish above everything else. Mm -hmm. 
Gora Nitai yeah. did not have wooden sandals. They did not ask Bissima for it because they knew that if they ask, Bissima would say, what will you do with wooden sandals? What do you need wooden sandals for? <laughs> do you have to go anywhere? <laughs> Bissima didn't want that they go from her, leave her for even a moment. Therefore, they waited for the arrival of another devotee. In the month of Sravana, a devoted lady for of Serapur, Baguna, in West Bengal, came to Vrindavan for Darshan. She stayed in Chiniyakunja, near the temple of Goranita. One day, while it was drizzling, Bissima was sitting on the veranda of the temple. She was pulling the string of the fan for Nita Igor with her left hand and chanting beats with her right hand. And slowly she became drowsy, like uh, <laughs> in drowsiness. She saw that Nitai came out of the temple and went to the courtyard, and Gora followed. Pissima cried out, Gora Nitai! Where are you going in the rain? You will catch cold. She felt as if she had seen a daydream. So she again began to pull the fan and again become drowsy. Meanwhile, Nitai Gore went to Chiniyakunja. At that time, the above-mentioned lady of Serapur Baguna was sleeping. So Nitai Gore shook her head and said, get up. You have not come here to sleep. The lady seemed to have a dream. And in her dream, she said, who are you? So they introduced themselves. Our names are Gora Nitai. We are sons of Pisima, of Bankandi. Why are you here? asked the lady. We have come to stay, to say, we have come to say that we do not have wooden shoes. Wooden sandals, sorry, wooden sandals. Could you give us one? See how our feet are so dirty with mud because of this rain and 
The lady was charmed to see the exquisite, beautiful play faces of Goranita. She had never seen such beauty before. On waking, she was still thinking of the two boys, and she didn't know why tears were constantly flowing from her eyes. In that state, she went out in search of them. It was still rain. And she asked uh, someone about the house of Pisima of Bankandi. The person pointed towards the temple of Goranitai. She went inside the temple and asked Pisima, Is this the house of Pisima? Yes. This is the house of Goranitai, the sons of Pisima. Replied Pisima and asked, Why are you crying? The lady replied, Where are you two sons now? I want to see them. So Pisima said, Oh, they are here. And she opened the door of the temple. The lady was surprised. She saw two boys exactly like the Goranita in her dream standing before her. She was so overwhelmed with emotion that, that she fell unconscious on the ground. On regaining consciousness, she narrated her dream to Pisima, and Pisima told her about what she had seen in her drowsiness. So both ladies embraced each other and continued for some time to shed tears of joy and love. The fortunate lady presented two pair of silver sandals to Goran Tai, and these sandals are in use even now. Another lady of Serapur Bhavna, named Prasanna Dasi, who lived in Vrindavan, once saw Nitai Gorin's dream. She saw that they had gone to her, decorated with all sorts of ornaments, and they said to her, See, we have all the ornaments, but not jingling anklets. Could you give us jingling anklets? The lady was overwhelmed with love and presented them golden anklets.
Balaram Baba, who was uh, for some time assisting Pishima in the service of Gauranitai, ah, a Babaji, so it was not Balaram Baba, some other Baba. the helper of Bishina, he stole the golden ornaments of Goranitai one night and ran away. Next morning, Pisima opened the door of the temple and she was shocked to see Nitai Gor without ornaments. In her grief and anxiety, she lay down on the veranda of her temple and she slipped into the into dream into into drowsiness like sleep. In that state, she said to Goranitai, Boys, why don't you tell me who robbed you of your ornaments? So they said, Mom, that Baba who served us is very poor. And we have given the ornaments to him because he gave us robbery. Robbery is uh, sweet, made from uh, condensed milk and sugar. So this Baba gave us robbery to eat many times. Do not say anything to him. Then what could Pishima do? She could not purchase new ornaments because Gorani Tai had made her a beggar, pauper. She only laughed and said, very well, do what you like. Give your ornaments to whomever you like. I know that if you want them again, you will get them from someone You do not shy, feel shy to beg, since you are the sons of Brahmins. Once Goranitai said to Pissima in a dream, Ma, let us go for Parikram of Braj. So the next day, Pisima seated Nitai Gore on the palanquin and started for Vraja Parikram with two Vaishnavas. You know what is palanquin? Uh, another pen. You know what is palanquin? This is so. So this is like a. Uh, uh, it's like a basket uh, with a, a long, 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 long stick basket in the middle, and two people are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With, yeah. Uh, hey, so good, so good. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. So, and with two Vaishnavas, uh, they went to Varaja Parikram. Their names were Matura Das and Vishnu Das. When they reached Matura, Pisima and Vishnu Das went ahead into the city to uh, purchase something, to buy something, and left Matura Das behind with the palanquin and Gorani Tai. At that time, some British soldiers were stationed in the city. They were curious to see the palanquin covered with the red cloth. So one of soldiers asked, what is there inside? Deities, replied Matura Das. Show the deities to us. Matura Das was afraid that the soldiers might do some harm to the deities. So he apologized and said, Sir, this is not the time for their darsha. So the soldiers started using force. Then, a strong glow of lightning came out of the palanquin, dazzling their eyes. They cried, oh God, and ran away. When Matura Das told Visima about this, she said, I'm happy to know that my children are now capable to defend themselves. So I need not worry about their safety anymore. <laughs> Pisima used to take bath in Yamuna three times a day and she served the Gorani Thai with all the piety and devotion when she became 100 years old It was not possible for her to serve them anymore. Then she engaged Sripad Gopeshwara Goswami, a descendant of Nityananda Prabhu, to take care of Gauranitai. Gofeshwara Goswami was a devoted person and his bhava, his mood towards the Goranitai, Goranitai was of Sakya, friendly type, friendly mood. His desire was to serve Gauranitai to his utmost satisfaction according to his bhava. But the difficulty was that the deities were small in size and looked more like Bala Gauranga and Bala Nitai, child Gauranga, child Nitai. 
rather than like young Gora and Nitai. Therefore, they suited the parental attitude of Pishima, but not the Sakya, friendly attitude of Gopeshwara Goswami. So, Gopeshwara Goswami told this to Pishima, deities are small size, and uh, he didn't feel that they are creating this, supporting this friendly, his friendly sentiment. Therefore, he could not serve them with love and devotion. So Pishima solved this difficulty she once told Sri Haridas Das who, uh, who was uh, the writer of Gaudiya Vaishnava Jivana So she entered into the temple and hold, held the chins of Goranitai with her hands and pushed them up like, get up, get up, <laughs> don't crawl on the ground, get up, get up. <laughs> so immediately, Nita Igor like stood up <laughs> and assumed bigger form like they grew up <laughs> oh my God. but goranitai were used to motherly affection and service of peace So it took some time for them <laughs> to get accustomed so, to new attitude, friendly, friendly love of Gopeshwara Goswami. Isima used to bathe them with warm water during winter. And Gopeshwara Goswami bathed them in cold water. And so they, they caught cold. <laughs> Isima now lived in a room on the first floor of the temple. And uh, then she would come down into the temple. But whenever anything happened which caused displeasure and discomfort to Goranitai, Their vibration came to her to her heart. So also Pishima came to know about the cold that they were suffering from. <laughs> <laughs> 
So she came down to see them. She saw their eyes red, and then there was this. Uh, what do you say in Japanese? Mizu. Hanamizu. Hanamizu. Yeah, my God. So she wiped their, their noses with the corner of her sari, like. <laughs> she also touched their body and found out that they have fever. And then she called Gopeshwara Goswami and said with tears in her eyes, What have you done? You have bathed my children in cold water and made them sick. See what severe cold they have caught and how their nose is running? As she said this, she showed to Goswami the corner of her sari still stained with Goranitai's Hanamiz. <laughs> mm. Gopeshwara Goswami did not believe. Ishima got angry and held the other corner of her sari near the nose of Gora and said, Baba, sneeze a bit. And Gora sneezed. <laughs> Again, mucus came out. And his nose and the temple was filled with its supernatural fragrance of a <laughs> <laughs> Then Gopeshwara Goswami fell down at the feet of Pishima <laughs> with all his humility. <laughs> Mm. Because Pishima was so, uh, how to say, too, uh, she was too much taking care of Goran and I. They became proud and naughty, like naughty, self willed, and just like proud, self assertive, pride, proud. If anyone in the temple did anything against their wish, they became wild <laughs> and did not hesitate to show their temper. <laughs> Once, on the day of Kujagara Purnima, one incident happened. On that day, Goranitai uh, used to be brought out from the altar into veranda and the lamp of 10 weeks, like Giwik lamp with 10 weeks, Giwiks, yeah, used to be lightened, lighted at the gate. 
But this time, Gopeshwara Goswami did not bring them out into the veranda. And he went out somewhere early at night after putting off the 10 wicks lamp to save oil. So the lamps were off. And Goranitai became so angry. Suddenly, Pisima heard a loud sound. And the te whole temple were co was covered with darkness. Gora, throw away a lamp inside the temple. And along with its stand, lamp and the stand. Isima understood what had made Gora angry. Gopeshwara Goswami came back. And then Pisima said to him, Gopeshwara, you did not bring out Nitai Gor. They are used to go to veranda today. And you also put off the 10 weeks lamp. Hmm. See how angry is Gora. He throw, threw away the lamp and is now sitting in the darkness. Why did you do this? Pisima was now 106 years old. She called Gopeshwara Goswami and told him about the particular day and time when she will leave the body. That day, at a particular time, she sat in the veranda of the temple and she was healthy and in good spirit. And then she left her physical body to serve Nita Igor and Radha Krishna in her Siddha Deha. After the passing away of Pisima, Gopeshwara Goswami once was sick of severe attack of smallpox. Mm. The disease took a serious turn and he remained unconscious for several days. In that state, he saw a woman looking like a monstrous. Monstrous, you know, like a... Like a monster. Okay. But monstrous. <laughs> yeah. So this woman, this monstrous, came to take him away. And at that moment, Pisima came also with the Goranitai. 
the most the monstrous so peace mind go around it i and the run away Nita is said to go Peshwara Goswami in a, how to say yeah. uh, like um, you you know caressingly like yeah uh, oh get up If you keep on lying like this who will give us to eat get up we are very hungry immediately gopeshwara prabhu regained consciousness and then she, he he made a large quantity uh, what is phlegm i don't know what is phlegm <laughs> maybe this is this kikir or something does someone know what is what is phlegm p h l e m phlegm mm. ah Flame accumulated in his. Can you can you say the sentence again, uh, Andaka Prabhu? Yeah, he discharged a large quantity of flame accumulated in his chest and became all right, like some disease came out of him, something like that. Flame, is it possible? Discharged the flame and became all right because he was very sick. Um, Yeah, phlegm is like um, mucus that accumulates, ah, you know, his mucus. Ah, like <laughs> coughing out. Like when you have to cough, ah, yeah. Okay, okay. Okay, thank you. Mucus. <laughs> mucus from the... My contribution. <laughs> Rade, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now we know. So and Gopeshwara Prabhu became all right again. Gopeshwara Goswami served Gorani Tai with devotion for many years. but somehow he developed a feeling of disappointment he said to himself i have served goranitai so long but what have i got if i had done bhajan in solitude for so long i would have attained something so he appointed another person for the service of goranitai and he himself went to kusum sarva to do bhajan there the third day at midnight he was sitting on the bank of the beautiful pond kusum sarva under the bakula tree he was absorbed in bhajan he saw a light very soothing to eye and the heart peering in the middle of the lake 
slowly the light came nearer to him. In a few moments, he saw Gauranita standing before him under the tree. They said, Dada, for three days we have not taken any food or water. Why have you gone away? Will you not come to us again? What objection could Gopeshwara Goswami have in going back to them? Since now he had attained what he had desired. <laughs> Understand, Ananda Prema, what happened? Understand what happened. The last sentence, sorry. Yeah, so Goran and I came to him after three days of bhajan. And because they didn't appear to him when he was serving them in Vrindavan. So he said, okay, they didn't appear, let's go to Kususaro. Then after three days, they appeared. And then they came back. He came back. Because this is the attainment of Bhagavan. Mm -hmm. Then the, the, the Nishta Deva appears to you. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe. So, what's the time now? Mm -hmm. 5.41. Okay. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, okay, we will read one story more, and then, uh, yeah, then that will be it for today. So, chapter 15, Gora Das Babaji. About the year... <clears throat> 1893, there lived in Nandagram, in a hut on the bank of Pavan Sarovar, where once upon a time Sri Sanatana Goswami used to do bhajan a Babaji. And his name was Gora Das. He was a Siddha saint. The main part of his sadhana consisted of offering garlands of flowers from Ghazipur. At a place at some distance from Pavan Sarovar, and also he made garlands. He rendered this service to Krishna with devotion constantly for five years in the hope that Krishna would one day be pleased to give him darshan.
But after five years of service, he began to feel that he was actually losing his hope. And that Krishna was not as kind as Baba thought. So Baba thought, if I rendered same service to Radharani, <laughs> she must have shown mercy upon me long, long before. Because unlike Krishna, she is not like Krishna. She was merciful beyond description. Radharani's body and soul were made of mercy and mercy alone. So Baba decided to leave Nandagram and go to Varshane to serve Radha instead of Nandalal. <laughs> One day, he actually, mm -hmm. just a moment. he took all his possession, small possession, what he had on his shoulders and started for Barshana. He had gone only a mile. And then he saw some cowherds returning to Nandagram after pasturing the cows. One of cowherds was very attractive, beautiful. He stopped to see Baba and asked, Baba, where are you going? And Baba said, Lao. Oh boy. I'm going to Barsana. Baba said with tears trickling down his cheeks. The boy looked at Baba with deep concern and said in a loud tone, Baba, don't go. Baba said, no, no, Lala, I must come, I must. What have I gained living here all these years? So boy stretched both of his hands to not let Baba go away and said, Baba, don't. I will not let you go. Baba became angry. Go away, you mischievous boy. Don't block my way. The boy exclaimed with eyes swing, swimming in tears. If you go, Baba, if you go away, who will do my service of flowers? Baba was surprised. He said, Who are you? And as he said this, 
the boy, the cows, the cow herds, all disappeared. And now there was no end to Baba's grief, sorrow. He began to roll on the ground crying, Krishna, Krishna, and lost consciousness. On regaining consciousness, he again started wailing, Krishna, you cheated me. How did you cheat me? You gave me darshan, but I could not recognize you. How could I, if you do, did not want to be recognized? You did not even stop for a while to let, let me look at you, my heart's content. Was it because you have no mercy? But no, the fault is not yours. The fault is mine. Because I don't have bhakti to recognize you and keep you. Toradas could not proceed further. He returned to Nanda Gram. And Nanda Lal enjoyed and joined. Sorry, Nanda Lal enjoined the Pujari to see that Goradas did not give up his flower seva. Yeah. He said that he would not accept the flower seva from anyone else. Mm -hmm.